Is Life a Work of Art? An Interactive Dialogue by Linda Mary Montano Outside of the San Francisco Art Institute, around 1971, over 40 years ago, I placed a treadmill on the sidewalk and performed an endurance by walking continuously for three hours while repeating over and over an abridged story of my life. I was wearing a tattered blue prom dress and a permanent smile device in my mouth and I'm sure I was accompanied by an audio tape of chicken sounds. Pause number one. Can you join me in making laughter sounds of appreciation for the seven glands of the body, specifically for the ovaries or testes? Laugh 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 laugh. End of pause. In retrospect, I can only imagine what my intentions may have been during my early performances. The four possibilities are Number 1, maybe I believe that repetitive telling of my traumas as art could detach me from mentally ruminating on them. Number 2, maybe I believe that by diffusing my own history via repetition for three hours, that I could neurologically switch my own brain waves from the worry side over to the happy, no worry brain. Number 3, Maybe I believe that by endurance and repetition, my story would become everyone's story and that as a group we could performatively create an atmosphere of pleasant aesthetic suspension. Number 4, maybe I was reenacting the Catholic Church's priesthood, reserved only for men. Pause number 2. Can you join me in making laughter sounds of appreciation for the seven glands of the body, specifically for the pancreas? Laugh 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 laugh. End of pause back to my story. Performance has always been my language of choice, my vehicle, my therapy, my medium my livelihood, my mystery solver, my passionate habit, my redemptive link to the sacred. As a result, instead of constantly floundering in the wreckage of my everyday life, I make art. Not lots of art or slick art or marketable art or well-known art because my attraction has stylistically been to the art pavia, to the hidden, to the distressed, to the simple to the childlike, to the recycled. Pause number three, can you join me in making laughter sounds of appreciation for the seven glands of the body, specifically for the adrenals? Laugh 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 laugh. End of pause I ask myself why do I like art Pavia? Number one, Maybe it is because I harbor an addiction to victimhood. Pause number four. Can you join me in making laughter sounds of appreciation for the seven glands of the body, specifically for the thymus gland? Laugh 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 laugh. End of pause number two, maybe I yearn to be seen as a tortured shaman cured by austerities and penances and now wanting to heal others. Pause number five, can you join me in making laughter sounds of appreciation for the seven glands of the body, specifically for the thyroid gland? Laugh 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 laugh. End of pause number three, maybe I was so totally imprinted on the image of a life-sized, scourged Christ hanging on the crucifix, that I got stuck in an ecstatic and sublime need to suffer. Pause number six, can you imagine joining me in making laughter sounds of appreciation for the seven glands of the body, specifically the pineal gland? 
laugh 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 end of pause all of these academic guesses are really masking the simple truth that i choose to be foolish for art yes i am a fool for art pause number 7 can you join me in making laughter sounds of appreciation for the seven glands of the body, specifically for the pituitary gland? Laugh 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 laugh. To illustrate the strategies I use on my practice, I will share three films. The first, titled Dystomia, is about an illness I have which neurologically causes pain, tremors and spasms. The Botox injections I receive every three months somewhat alleviate the symptoms. In this film I do three things, number one. I show an uncomfortable medical procedure dot 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 needles being put in my neck. Number two, in the soundtrack I contradict the shock, awe and pity party by having a child read a fairy tale. Oxymoron art. Number three. The result is that humor drains the harsh reality of its sting. Innocence trumps masochism. Film number two is titled Mother Teresa. One day while spasming from dystonia, I was bent over, cramped, twisted, stiff and I said to myself, quote, Linda. You look just like Mother Teresa. End quote. At that second another persona emerged. Not a bad trade-off because from the lines of illness and medical misery sprung art. I call this film healing. Film number three is titled Thank You Dr. Aruna Mehta. For 19 years I studied with this extraordinary woman who died in 2009. She was a compassionate mother and friend to all. I call this film a tribute to her. It is also a public heart song and opportunity to honor my friend in the company of your support. This is Morning Art. Please feel free to remember internally or write the names of your deceased family and friends you would like to honor. To conclude, I would like to sing for you a prayer by Joseph Goldstein. May all beings be filled with loving kindness. May all beings be well. May all beings be peaceful and at ease. May all beings be happy. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.